I'm very happy to say I'm sat with Dave Garn from Depeche Mode. How are yes, you, Dave? Yes, I'm very good, thanks. Very good to see you. Yeah, you too. I've got to say congratulations first on a fantastic album. Thank you. I think it's your 14th studio album, isn't it now? It is indeed, yeah, which is a bit mind-blowing, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but I actually think it's... Um, I think we made a fine record together. I think you have. And yeah. the critics have been very celebratory about it, yeah. they, which is always good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, can we, be hard to please, I guess. You got if you, you believe the good one, you got good ones, you got to believe the bad ones as well. Yeah. But actually, fortunately, I haven't actually seen, they, I keep getting put these reviews in front of me and they, they've all been pretty good so far. Uh, Before I heard it, I looked at the titles. Right. And they're very powerful titles. You've got Going Backwards, which kicks it off. You've got Scum. Yeah. You've got Fail. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely... I mean, it's an album about humanity, you know, and about our place in it. And uh, and we're not doing very well. There's a lot going on. There <laughs> yeah. is a lot of yeah. nasty stuff happening in the world. Yeah. And, you know, Going Backwards is... is that's why we led off with that track, because... Uh, as much as we do feel like we're going forward and new door- doors are being opened. I live in I live in America. I've lived in America for almost, uh, what, 27 years or something. So um, things have changed there since I've been living there. You know, there's... And, and, but they... Uh, things are changing again, not for the good, it seems. Um, and that's going to be a while. You know, we've got to see how this evolves the next few years. And hopefully people will come out and shout about it and things that they're not happy with and... The one great thing about America is that you can do that without being thrown in prison. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in some countries where there are other dictators, um, in the, you know, if you are outspoken or, you know, you're the wrong color or you're gay or, you know, um, you're, just, you're just not saying the right thing about the power, uh, the person that's in power, you're, you're, you disappear. You know, it's a worrying um, position to be in, isn't it? Well, it really is groups. because you know the way I I, I feel about life is that um, everybody should lead the life that they want to lead, and they shouldn't be told otherwise. And um, I, 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 politicians always unnerve me, to be honest. What I've been witnessing in the last like few, couple of years, um, it seems that long. Certainly, the the campaigning um, up up and towards. And the final result of the, you know, the presidency in America was quite shocking. Um, and a lot of this record was made during that time. It was made during the time of the campaigning. And the songs, to be honest, were written mostly, I would say, actually a little before that, if not during the campaign. So, you know, some people have kind of like listened to the album and related it to, you know, directly to Donald Trump or, you know, Brexit or what's going on. But it's it's all those things and more, a lot more. I've got to hand it to you, Dave, because I've always seen Depeche Mode as forward-looking and seeing the future. You've done yeah. it again with yeah. this album. You've yeah. seen the future when yeah, it comes well, to politics. Well, you know, I think actually more so with this album than and with a, a, a few albums before that. I think that every now and then we we sort of break some ground and surprise ourselves because I think we take a bit of a risk. And I think with this record, we sort of put our neck out a bit. Um, Martin wrote a bunch of songs. I wrote a bunch of songs. We came together. It just so happened that lyrically, the songs were about our kind of um, distrust and of (laughs) the world and relationships within the world and where we're going and who we are and how we feel about each other. You know, when that happens... You, and we were lucky as well to work with James Ford, who produced the album, because he he really brought a a, a new lease of life to us uh, in terms of like the work in the studio. We work much faster than we have for previous albums. Um, we seem to be getting long. We were getting longer and longer and longer with that, and that was not due to any other reason than ourselves. Just kind of like I think looking for a kind of looking for another direction. Somehow, I think we had that with Ben Hillier when we made Playing the Angel. And I think over the course of the next couple of albums, I think we um, were kind of just 
in a way, almost repeating the process. And with this album, it's quite different uh, feeling sonically and lyrically and melodically too. You mentioned Cover Me. That is my favourite track on the album. Oh, thanks. I wrote that with uh, Christian and Pete. I love it because you talk about being up with the Northern Lights. Yes. And it has that kind of woozy feel. Yeah. Where it all feels a bit surreal, but you've got that, it's almost like a heartbeat that runs towards the end. Yeah. It's very climactic. It's very... Well, yeah, I, well, it I wanted it to, to be climax. very cinematic. Yeah, it's amazing. And about this sort of idea of us finally destroying this beautiful planet that we live on, hence the Northern Lights. So I'm just one in many millions and of beautiful things that I, you know, the oceans and just, just things that, you know, we take for granted. And Northern Lights was like this metaphor that I wanted to use because I did once experience actually being there while that was happening up way up, way up north in Scandinavia. And um, is it quite an emotional experience? Yeah, and it's also out of, not not of this world somehow, quite spiritual. Yeah, uh, and and moving moving to the point of tears where it, the beauty of something happening uh, in our universe. And so I had this idea uh, at that time, a, a little bit, of, a little lyrical idea, not really a melody, but but anyway, I came back to that, and that, that became that song. And I also saw the song in two halves, where the second half of the song was where we were finally leaving, or something. This person or whoever it is, so I live vicariously through, leaves the planet only to find another planet that is exactly the same as ours, and he uh, has this. A horrible feeling of like oh wow it's not the planet it's me i'm doing this i i'm 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 destroying this beautiful world that i live in and that can be something that's just a an, an emotional relationship that you have with another person or trying to be have a relationship with another person that you can't quite get to because you just you just can't and so that for me quite often is where I find myself with music and songs is I am quite often this other person. Of course, it's me, but um, I can live vicariously through this performer, this guy that I've created, which, you know, it's a, a character. It's, it's something. And, you know, throughout songs and film and books and stuff like that, that's where, where I get lost. Whenever I hear your songs, I can always kind of visualize them when I see you live. And it's normally pretty accurate to how I have it in my head. Is that the sort of thing you have when you're in the studio and you're making music? You can, you, you, you want to visualize. Oh yeah, it I do. Me personally, that's where I, that's where I begin. I, I begin somewhere that's you know very visual. Um, music to me is visual. Good music is visual. When I was a kid, I and, and now too, I listened to David Bowie all the time. And he always was somewhere else that I wanted to be <laughs> and um, comforted me. We're seeing a lot of reruns of Top of the Pops from 1982 oh, yeah. and 1983 feature very heavily with Depeche Mode there. Oh, oh, dear. Um, oh dear. Do you ever look back? <laughs> what, what do you think when you look um, back? I find it quite difficult to be quite honest and a little awkward. Um, because you feel like a different person now? Well, yeah. I mean, look, you, when I first got with the band, I mean, and I was like 18, 19 years old, and then there's a lot of there's a lot of time has passed since then. So you know, you watch yourself back then, and it, usually the first thing is like, oh God, what was I wearing? <laughs> um, you know, that's usually the first thing that comes to mind. And oh my God, what was I doing? With my We've hair? all been yeah. there, though. We've yeah, all done of course, it. <laughs> you've, you've all got the outfit, but I get to see it over and over again. <laughs> You're reminded. You know, of it. it's like reminded, especially with those old top of the popsies or photographs that sometimes get. Phil, my brother, actually often sends me <laughs> photographs or things that he finds, I guess, on the internet. Oh, look, do you remember this? And I'm like, oh God, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> you know where'd you find that um but yeah so but you know I'm, it's all part of growing up isn't it as well it's all part it of living your life a uh, part of your life anyway in public if you like absolutely you know it's, it's you got to pay the price yeah <laughs> dave i could talk to you all day sadly we are out of time right i love spirit the fantastic you new album much. you've done and i look forward to what you do in the future yeah, as well because yeah. I'm always looking forward to where you go next because yeah. it's always a different direction I've got no it? idea where that is at the moment but you know I've got to put a lot of energy into uh, this tour that we're going to embark on now starting in the summer or in May um, which I'm excited about and also terrified about but um, 
at the same time for for good reasons in both ways. It's, I just always want it to be the best I can possibly make it be. And it, sometimes I start feeling like oh, yeah, I'm not sure if I've still got it. You know, I can still go up there and and, and prance around for two hours convincingly and sing. And most of all, to be able to carry my voice the way I want to sing with these songs and do them justice. You know, you definitely still have got it. Well, I hope so. Your loyal yeah, fan base have proved yeah. that they're still there. <laughs> okay. Um, 40 years it's almost yeah, nearly 40 yeah, years it's almost incredible. 40 years incredible yeah. Yeah. it's good to see you thank you for your time Dave, thanks Phil thank you